by first copying it in this technology. So you can have that access or what? Exactly know where you're going with this. Yeah. Well, where I'm going... Uh, no, I thought you were, you were here to talk about the surveillance camera. Well, well, I'm here to, well, in order to talk about the surveillance system in Peterborough, mm -hmm. we need to understand what's here now and what we're being proposed, a few more cameras in the downtown. You're telling me that there are different systems from the private systems internally to the businesses in town at the moment? They, well, there would be, yeah. They wouldn't be operated by a private. But it's another system outside, okay. You're familiar with the private systems at gas pumps and so on? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're telling me that what we need to do here is if we want any information from those systems, we have to go to those private people to access them, correct? That's what we have to do. I don't know whether... You don't know about OPP or anybody you're, else. You're not going to be able to get any access from a private uh, person unless you've got some kind of relationship with them. Well, you see, my grandfather... We can. We can if we, uh, if, if uh, somebody comes in and holds a gun to a clerk's face at a, at a convenience store, yeah. the owner is usually quite willing to provide us with the, uh, with the video surveillance that will assist us in making an apprehension. But well, the I, terrorize that, that person beyond the counter. Well, that I can understand. So, but I also understand that we're using these camera systems on things like the 407. That's outside of the scope That's of our but you see, maybe we should understand a little bit outside our scope before we get involved in that scope in our municipality. Okay? So what we're, do, what we're working toward here is making people feel comfortable and desensitizing them to this photographic system, which was unheard of 10, 15 years ago. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we can see a news story here in the star that I would think we all need to be aware of, <clears throat> particularly if we're going to dabble in this technology, because increasingly we're finding the technology outstripping the needs of the natural man. And I think this could... Well, I'll, I'll tell you, let me, let me say what we're looking at the technology. About. We're looking at the technology as an aid to assist the investigation of crime and to apprehend those responsible. Mm. And if you know if you've read the newspaper today or heard the news reports a few weeks ago we had a young man who was stabbed in the throat who almost died. Um, there was some uh, video uh, footage that took play that was uh, actually came from a nearby business of the incident. It led us in the right direction in our in our uh, investigation. We were able to interview the right people and as a result we've we've made a couple of arrests in that incident. Mm -hmm. We had uh, another incident that took place a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago where a gentleman uh, smashed uh, the front window on George Street of a, of a business. We went out with a uh, large screen television. Within a half an hour, he was at the uh, front counter of a Charlotte pantry on Charlotte Street, uh, where he assaulted and robbed a young woman behind the counter. The uh, the uh, video surveillance footage was. Uh, was vital in identifying that individual. Private footage from that actual private place? From both those private So places. you're speaking about private places yep. where they're sharing the information with you still. Yep. This is a public issue where we're t saying that people are going to be photographed and potentially databased without their consent. Nobody's going to be databased. Planning on databasing anybody. Is the technology capable of doing the database? Sure there's technology there. you know? okay. I'm sure there is technology to database it, but that's not the intent. That is not the intent. No, the, 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 the intent here would have be having a, basically, a, in layman's terms, to have a rolling loop that would probably be retained for about 14 days. Um, if uh, if there was no reported crime or we had no interest in any activity that took place during that 14-day period, it would be recorded over and it would be it would be gone. Oh, you destroy. If it's not used, it's if it's not, uh, no, no, there's no there's, sorry, there's, there's no retention of this. After 36 hours, did you say? No, no. Well, it would de it probably depends. depend. Some some police services are keeping it upwards of, of a month. Uh, only bigger services, uh, but me personally, if I was a taxpayer, I'd want you to keep it all forever in case there was something that we found out 10 years ago happened that we actually had video of it and then we <coughs> used that to protect the child. Well, no, that's the purpose not, of that's uh, not the that's not an intention. I, no. I, that, 
Is that a Tom Thompson painting, by any chance? Pardon me? Is that a Tom Thompson painting up there? Uh, yeah, there's a matter of He comes from my area. Does he? Yeah. But anyway, pretty nice stuff. Yeah, yeah but uh, we also know of uh, this whole business of uh, technology creep. And we start out with the best of intentions. Mm -hmm. We also know what my grandfather said, these best of intentions tend to pave the road to hell. So we kind of need to be on guard as to where well, it leads I, us. You know, I, I can assure you that we have no intention of monitoring this on a 24-hour basis. We have no intention of retaining all of this, these reams and reams of data. Right. Um, first of all, it's a huge cost of storage and uh, everything else. And mm -hmm. that's, that's not a large cost. Data to, storage to, to retain small. video data indefinitely. Yeah, indefinitely. Well, really. Well, and just every day just so out. we're clear and not confused, we're familiar. I think all of us with the 407, and we're familiar with how that system works. We're familiar how the province built it, and then sold it for 25 cents on the dollar. All right. We're familiar that for that database to function efficiently, we've got every license plate in a database from every jurisdiction in North America. So what we have here is I'm bringing you this information so we realize that that particular article in the Toronto Star back in 2004, I'm not well, it's right there. I'll give you both one so you can follow up on it. And it ties in from this here information that surfaced in the 70s. They're all tied together. This is used to identify everything that we're supposed to touch, okay? And increasingly, that's what it's doing. It's a barcoded system that identifies everything. I'm in the field of agriculture. I'm getting extremely sensitive to the fact that people aren't going to be allowed with this bill that passed on December the 22nd last year to have food because of radiation that might be floating in here, because of listeriosis and a million and other one things. Okay, that's kind of okay. Well, realm. what I'm saying uh, is you that identified the identified yourself what, as somebody who wanted to talk about the surveillance. Campaign. I do, and that's all part of it because it's surveillance of food. This is surveillance of things, and this is surveillance of people. Mm -hmm. And what we have here is a system that's placing people in this database. And are you familiar with the Ontario Drive Test Centers? Mm -hmm. And could you tell me who owns the Ontario Drive Test Centers in the city? No. No. Well, do you know? What's this got to do with surveillance it's cameras as well? It's, it's, it's got to do with the, the fact that they've that taken an enrolled... Topic. It's got No, we're not off topic, we're right on topic. Okay. This Ontario Drive Test Center has enrolled everybody's face in a database, and this Ontario Drive Test Center is not Ontario's. It's a company out of Britain, which I presume you're aware of, called Circle. And they've been identifying people since 1929. They don't drive test, they identify people, and they're doing it globally. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that went into the Middle East with the U.S., Halliburton, Blackwater, and Canadian militaries to put people in these databases, right here. Our database is the mother of them all happens to be in India. The mother of the Middle East happens to be in Virginia. Everything transposes back and forth in what they call real time. Okay? Lifetime. Mm -hmm. And what we got here in this city is a development of a new religion where we're going to have a great architect watching everybody. This great architect the all-seeing eye, the great architect of the universe, which you, both of you gentlemen are aware of or you wouldn't be in the positions you are. And if you think you're going to be shoving that religion much further down the public's throat, you better check history. So what I'm saying here is you, this database here in the Middle East is presently using drones. You familiar with a drone, I'm sure, that float the skies of the Middle East to pick off people that used to have to become before a court of law but now, the, and the only reason you bring them before a court of law in history is to execute the right guy. But now they have the technology to do it in the field. Okay. And I'm, just let me finish. 
So what you're doing is you're uh, suggesting that Peterborough needs to be brought into this whole dark side of surveillance. Instead of buying a little leather and putting the guys out on the beat, creating employment, and uh, shunning a technology that we don't either want nor need, I tell you not, the secret is no longer. You don't need Tubal Cain to get through into the lodge, and most of you guys that sit on the porch know nothing. Okay, I'm not saying you're on there. But this thing is getting past the funny stage. So I'm suggesting to you and this municipality, you give serious thought where this money's going and where this money's coming from. My granddaddy always said, follow the money. And this money that's coming from the province, the province is bought and paid for by the central bankers. And they're shoving their, this is a banking technology. This is a banking technology that's going to replace debit card pin numbers, they think. And if you need any identification from me, you're looking at it and listening to it. And I'm not interested in your or the province's identification of me. Okay? They have thought they got away with stealing it by first copying it in this technology and to make it mandatory that I use their technology. Okay? And now we're thinking we're going to make it, uh, we're going to sweet talk people into these cameras on the street to monitor people that will have the capability. That's why I would like to know all the information you have on this system, its capabilities, the resolution. Well, first of all, we don't have the system yet. Okay, I would like to know. We, we don't have the funding for the system. That's good news. We don't have the system. 